Hi, this is Andy from GPS Training. In this video, we thought it'd be a nice time with the launch of the new Garmin Montana 710, 710i and 760i to just do a refresh on the different satellite systems that the devices can connect to, some of the terminology to do with the satellite systems and what sort of accuracy we should expect to see. And I'll talk about some of the differences of the setting options from if you're using an in-reach device. So that's the 710i and the 760i. So I've got the 760i on the left-hand side here. So that's the one with the additional camera. And it's of course the SOS button. It's the one with the in-reach technology. What the satellite system options are that are slightly different to the unit on the right, which is the Montana 710 that doesn't have the in-reach two-way satellite communication. So the first thing I'm going to mention is the terminology we use for the way the units can lock onto satellites because often this can get confused with different terminologies that some people use on the internet, different companies use. So when we're looking at the new range and the existing range, the range that was there before, which was the Montana um, 700, 700i and 750i, plus the new devices, they're using the same system, which is what we call multi-GNSS. So what does multi-GNSS mean? That means the device is capable of picking up at least two sets of satellites, two GNS systems. GNS stands for global navigation systems. So rather than the, the older devices that we had many years ago, like the old 12 channel yellow devices that Garmin had and uh, other devices, they only picked up the GPS American global positioning system. You didn't have the option of two sets of satellites. So when we talk about a device that is multi GNSS, that means it's picking up two or more global navigation systems. So it might be more than two. In the case of these devices, they're picking up two sets of satellites. Where the confusion can come in, we have newer, um, sorry, not so much newer devices, other devices out there, um, things like a Garmin GPS Map 67. We have things like Garmin Phoenix 8 watches. We have the Coros Apex 2 Pro and Vertex 2S watches that we stock, as well as multi-GNSS. Those devices also have a setting called dual frequency, or Garmin sometimes call that multiband. We prefer the terminology dual fre frequency because multiband can get confused with multi-GNSS. So when you say dual frequency multiband, that's not the same. The device will be picking up more than one set of satellites, but it's also using multiple frequencies, L1 and L5, E1 and E5 is the terminology you sometimes see written down. So it means the satellites from like so the GPS, the Galileo system, um, the Beidou, which is one of the Asian systems, and um, they're sending out um, different satellite signals at different frequencies and the devices will reject a signal that's um, reflected off say a building or a cliff to help improve accuracy. So with those sorts of devices yes we will see something like a GPS map 67 get down to six foot accuracy but that does not mean that these Montana devices have poor accuracy. Yes they're not using the dual frequency multiband but what I've always found with these devices and been very impressed because they have a large antenna in them obviously it's a much bigger unit than some of the small units. There's all, they've always been great with a signal so we've got these devices set up as multi GNSS. I'll show you the settings in in a moment. So in the settings I've told the devices to lock onto more than one set of satellites. We've also got some land-based geostationary satellite options that I'll show you as well. So that's just a little bit about the terminology. So both these devices are multi-GNSS. Of course one of the changes is the device with the in-reach capability, so that's the 760i I've got here or the 710i that have the SOS button on the side. They also have an antenna that picks up the Iridium system. The Iridium satellite system is used when you're sending a message via satellites, you're sending a check-in message using the tracking via the Iridium um, two-way communication system. It's what we call the in-reach system that Garmin build in, or if you were to press the SOS button. It's using the, the GPS and Galileo satellites to, to tell, tell people where you are, but it's actually sending that message using the Iridium system. The 710 on the right, because that doesn't have the SOS SOS, the two-way satellite communication, that doesn't have Iridium built into the antenna, so that's not going to pick up the Iridium satellites. Now with that, 
we see two changes within the settings. So I'm just going to show you that first before we go into accuracy. So on both of these units, I'm just going to go into the setup and system. And where we go satellite, you'll see a slight difference in options. So where you've got the devices with the Iridium antenna, the two-way satellite communication, you can either set it as GPS, GPS in Galileo, demo mode would turn off the satellite lock, that would just be for demonstrating normally inside a shop, um, etc. So you're going to have it as GPS or GPS in Galileo, whereas the unit on the right that doesn't have the Iridium system and the SOS button, we've got an extra choice of GPS and GLONASS. So GPS being the American Global Positioning System, GLONASS is the Russian system, Galileo is the system that was put up um, via a European um, a set of countries that came together in Europe and put the Galileo satellites up. Now, what one is the best? Now, if you put GPS only, that's where Garmin base their battery figure. So when they talk about 24 hours battery GPS recording, it is with GPS only. A lot of manufacturers will use a figure where it's only GPS only to give the most, of course, the most accurate, um, the longest battery life, should I say, but it's not necessarily the most accurate signal because you're only locking on to one set of GNSS uh, navigation systems. We tend to recommend locking on to two systems we have found in our testing, generally, the GPS in Galileo seems to work best. But sometimes I've found there's not a lot of difference, so you can obviously try to see one, which one works best for you. If you've got the 7100 unit, obviously, if you try GPS in Galileo, try GPS in GLONASS, see which one works best. If you're really wanting to conserve battery and you're in a real clear view of the sky, an open area, GPS will save battery, but it won't lock onto as many satellites. Was an Egnos. What is Was an Egnos? That is geostationary land-based satellites. I generally turn that on because it does help with accuracy. But the, when we look at the systems, the Was system is only for America and the Egnos for Europe. So if you weren't in America or Europe, you could potentially just turn those off because they're not going to work. So if you're in America or Europe, turn them on. The Was stands for Wide Area Augmentation System, and the Egnos for European geostationary navigation, overlay surface, and they're just a uh, service, should I say. And with those land-based stations, they do help with the accuracy. So we normally have those turned on. So I'm just gonna come back out of here now and back to the main menu where we've got the satellite icon. And what you can see here with these units, the accuracy is actually this figure in the top right. I've got my units of measure set as feet. They're both actually sitting at 10 feet now, which is brilliant considering I'm inside. I know the units have been turned on for a good sort of five minutes. I do have a, um, a skylight about eight foot away from me. So it will be getting a signal through the skylight, but bear in mind it's got to go through the skylight. And then we've got... Um, the building itself where the actual roof is and the skylights and the main roof are probably another 30 foot away. So it's still going a fair old difference, d distance through the skylights. They're not really meant to lock, you be used inside, but it's just showing you that we are still getting a satellite lock. Ideally, you want to be doing any testing when you're outside. So I've done some testing this morning outside the building here. I've got a fairly good view of the sky. There's a, you know, a few buildings nearby, but you know, be honest, it's an open view of the sky. And what I did is I actually tested these two units with a unit that uses dual frequency multiband. So it was the GPS map 67i I actually tested it with. So using the stopwatch from a cold start, all units turned off, turned them all on with a bit of help. And what we found is under 30 seconds, all three units locked on the satellite. The main difference was, to be honest, the one with dual frequency multiband went to sort of eight foot and then six foot accuracy within 30 seconds, whereas the Montana units were sitting at around 32 feet accuracy, but after just over a minute, they dropped down to 10 feet. So generally with multi-GNSS and with a good aerial, like we've got in the Montana range here, after about a minute, minute 30 seconds maybe tops with a good view of the sky you're going to see that accuracy hopefully go down to around about 10 feet which is still great um, it's a great accuracy we only actually need three satellites to give us a fix on the ground and the fourth one gives us our height data the figure at the bottom here is showing you the satellite it's locked onto of course that will be a lot better when we're outside we get the accuracy figure at the top right the height data it's never great from GPS, but it's a good guide. So that will flicker up and down till we've got a full lock outside. 
I've got both these units set for British National Grid for the Ordnance Survey maps we use in Great Britain. So I'm actually getting a grid reference at the top left of the screen. That'll depend on what grid reference you've set your unit uh, in the units of measure and position format. So I've been very impressed with the accuracy um, just in the initial test. Of course, the real thing is for us to get out and start walking and hiking with the units, go through some forest areas, go through some areas with high, high cliffs, high buildings, etc. to give it a thorough test. But the predecessor, the 700 range, we were OM 700, 700i, 750i, always been very impressed with. It's the same antenna in this one, same technology, nothing wrong with that. It works well, never had any issues with it. So it's just to give you really an idea of terminology and those settings. One thing we have got different on the inReach um, models, this are the ones with the two-way satellite communication with the Iridium um, system. If I turn them over on the back, you'll see the option of an external antenna, which if you are looking for one, we can order them in for you. Garmin do stock them. We don't stock them at the moment, but if you ever wanted one, just let us know. And the idea is if you were using it inside, it could be the cabin of a boat. And of course you've got all the metal or the cabin of the boat stopping the signal getting through. And you want to put an external GPS stroke, Iridium antenna on the top of the cab. Or if you're in a sort of all-terrain vehicle, using it with a say a suction mount, you could put an antenna outside the vehicle and we've got this connection here for an external antenna but we only actually get that on the models with the SOS button um, the option of that external antenna that does mean we lose the extra lanyard slot that you can see at the bottom of the one that doesn't have the SOS button the 710 unit but we can get an external antenna in for you if you're interested so I'm just going to turn them back over. So I hope you found this video useful. Just to go through a reminder really of the terminology that we use when we talk about how these devices are locking onto satellites, the sort of accuracy that we should expect to get and some of those different settings that we can put into the unit. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.